Let's read uh, Ephesians 6 from 11 to 18. This is what we know. Ephesians what? 6. I want to share with you very wonderful thing. Let's read from verse 11. It says, put on the full armor of God. His percepts are like the splendid armor of a heavenly armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces for this darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on, therefore, put on the complete armor of God. I love when it says complete armor of God so that you'll be able to resist and stand your ground in the evil day. And having done everything to stand, firm. So stand firm, verse 14, and hold your ground. Having tightened the wide band of truth around the waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having strapped on your, on your feet the gospel of, of peace in preparation Above all, lift up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I was reading this. I found that... Many times we, as Christians, we don't know about spiritual warfare. Because many times we think uh, it's only challenges that we are facing. That we, we need to pray against those challenges and when they are solved, we, we are Christians. It's not the results that you receive that determine your Christianity. In fact, you cannot judge someone by the condition is facing. Tell him you cannot judge someone by his situation. So the writer of Ephesians was exposing why when devil attacks and, and Christians fall. Can I say this? Spiritual warfare. I want to talk about spiritual warfare. It's when you face what you are facing, but you are still standing. Is then you are in spiritual warfare. Let me say it again. We cannot talk about spiritual warfare. If you face the challenge, and after that you fall, it's no spiritual warfare. It's your opportunity. But spiritual warfare is when you face that challenge. When it comes, you overcome. You are still standing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it talks about standing. 
against the plans and the schemes that, that deceives or traps you. The reason why you have to be trapped is so that your soul must not escape. Whatever you are facing is not there for your materials. It's there for your soul. Everybody can still get anything around you. But spiritual warfare, you fight it for the sake of your soul. Not for the sake of material things. Can you tell them a spiritual warfare? It's spiritual. You fight it for your soul. So that you won't be saved, you won't be trapped. The Bible shows that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Meaning we need to know our opponents. I want to tell you that many times. Our enemies are our brothers and sisters. Our neighbors. Any actions they portray on you, they might be telling you that they've been, been trapped by Satan. And he can use them against you. So that you'll be trapped too. I don't know if you're hearing that. So know your fight. And and know your enemy. We are fighting spirits. We are fighting spirits. The reason why, you know, some people are reacting the way you don't need. Spirits are involved. They might have overcome by those spirits. But don't allow yourself to be overcome. There are five things, let me say six, that you need to have. The first one, if you want to overcome truth, number two, righteousness, number three, gospel, meaning, you speak the gospel to others. Number four, faith. Five, salvation. Six, the word that you need to use when you are living. The word you need to apply. You know, the Bible says our speech must be seasoned with salt. It means you must never go Contrary to the word. Otherwise, you can be trapped. Listen. The devil doesn't care about material blessings. I will tell you why. Because he knows you will die one day and leave them here. Okay, let me say it again. The devil doesn't care about materials. You know, you can just mind if you are getting them in righteousness. You can mind if you are getting them in righteousness. Automatically, if you are getting them in righteousness, it means you have the truth. I don't know if you are hearing that. So, you can still have materials, but you will check how these materials are not tripping your soul. Whatever you are facing, it's not for that car or your house. It's not your husband or your, your, your wife or children. The issue is your soul. Tell about the what you are facing is not there. Those things that are coming against you are not there because people around you they don't understand. Because the challenges you are facing they need to be solved. No, those things are there so that your soul will be trapped. Do you know that I'll tell you this. If your soul is escaping, 
you know very well what you need. And you know what to pray. You and know what to get. And you get in truth. One of our problems is we didn't hear Jesus when he said how can you just have all on earth and you lose your soul. I'm sure you understand that now. Whatever we have which are challenges are there to trap our souls. So spiritual warfare is a war of souls. Is when you fight for your own soul. And if you fight for yourself, and when you how fight it, it, if you can overcome, it's easy for you to know what is a blessing around you. Not, everything is called a blessing. I don't know if, don't know if you are hearing me. So don't allow yourself to be trapped. Tell your neighbor, don't allow yourself to be trapped. Your soul is important. If we say we are fighting spiritual warfare by praying prayers of solving our problems only we can end up missing heaven. If you read 1 Peter 2.11 11 to 12 it says Dear beloved First Peter 2, 11 to 12. Dear beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be they may, they may by your good works mm -hmm. which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. I love Amen. that scripture. That scripture shows that you know whatever you hear might be there that what you are waiting for will never come. But it comes easy. If you are hearing people talking against you, if you are facing against you, but still you hold your integrity. If you can read that verse, it talks about abstain. Be like a pilgrim. Be like a stranger. Do you know a stranger? A stranger does not possess anything. A stranger is coming from somewhere. I'll tell you this because our, our gospel is changed now. Many of us, we are building our empires. Can I say it again? Many of us, we are doing what? Building our empires. Yeah, the Bible says, be like a stranger. A stranger is a person who knows that this car is not mine. Mm, I can ya still ka. die here. But there's a car somewhere there. A stranger. Many of our problems are coming because we are making this world home. Look what has happened with us now. He says, if there's anything that can affect your soul, no, no, abstain. Do you know the meaning of abstain? Abstain is the issues of ignore it. If you ignore it, it's there. Fight it that you are not part of it. Prove it. When we talk about abstain, prove that you are not part of it. So the Bible says, like you know, pilgrims, you are, you are there for a moment, but you are going somewhere. You know what, what, what the Bible talks about pilgrims? Pilgrims are people who go 
for a process. There's a certain process that God will put you on. So that when this issue of pilgrimage is over, you become what God wants you to be. We are in a world where we need to be pilgrims. Whatever we are facing now here is a training. It's something that we need to deal with. And we tell ourselves there is somewhere where we belong. I don't know if you are hearing me. Don't be trapped here. This place is not home. In a spiritual warfare, you don't compromise with a situation that will arrest your spirit here. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell me about my friends. In a spiritual warfare, you fight to disconnect yourself where you are. Because otherwise, you'll go for all night prayers. And you say you are in spiritual warfare. And you find that you are just praying for your situation to change. What do you do when the blessing has come? What do you do when, when that answer has come? The spiritual warfare is more about your soul. I'm not saying that it's not also more about materials. The first way is spiritual. It's your soul. When you overcome now, you can defeat any enemy. You can stand to take your blessing. The reason why you defeated now is so that you must not be what God wants you to be. Let me give you this word. This week, you're overcoming your enemy. If you read 1 Peter again, 4, from 12 to 16, I want to read that verse. 1 Peter again. Verse 16. I want to give you scripture so that you go and understand from 12. He says, Beloved, Arate. do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to mm. test you. Amen. In, that is to test the quality of your faith. Hallelujah. As though something strange or unusual were happening to you. But in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, Keep on rejoicing so that when his glory, filled with radiance and splendor, is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy. Can you see that? Amen. If you are insulted and reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory and of God is resting on you. Mm -hmm. huh? Amen. 15. Make sure that none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or any sort of criminal, mm. as a troublesome murderer interfering in the affairs of others. But if anyone suffers as a Christian mm. because of his belief, Amen. he is not to be ashamed, Amen. but is to glorify God because he is considered worthy to suffer in this name. Amen. Can you see that? Levon. All right, let's, let's stop there. Look at Ali this. Amen. Look at this. What you are facing now. As I told you that it's better you suffer. As long, long, you long as you are a Christian. As long as we now pollute it. Can I say it again? What you are suffering of now does not depict you anything. But it matters before God if you are a Christian. I'm not saying, I'm not encouraging suffering. But I'm encouraging you to overcome what you are facing by living a Christian life. I don't know if you're hearing that. There's a lot of things that people are facing because 
they are questioning why they are facing all this. You have to face what you are facing. And there have to be a time to overcome. I don't know if you are hearing that. If you look at that verse there, a special verse it says, make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or a thief. Or a criminal. It means suffering is there. Persecution is there. Suffering is there. But don't live your life that Christ gave you. Here it says, you must never say what you are facing is strange. When, when God wants to do something with you, there have to be suffering somewhere. And that suffering must connect you more with God. The moment you realize that this suffering is too much, not that it's a spiritual warfare. Because you are being checked in your soul if you won't sell your soul. If you read that verse, it says, do not be surprised. I'm sure you are surprised. Some of you, you trusted people that backfire on you. It means you have to face things that will shock you. And also you find you are surprised. You know why the Bible says, do not be surprised. It means you had expectation. You see when you have got expectation, you prayed it's enough. You fasted it's enough. But something bad happened. You know, oh, maybe somewhere I'm wrong. But if you read there, here is to test the quality of your faith. Whatever you are facing is to check you. It's coming to test you if truly you are saved. If your soul is free, disconnected, automatically no challenge will really affect you. One of our problems is we normally ask ourselves, where is God? When we face problems, where is God? But if we begin to rejoice, what the scripture says, it says rejoice when you are facing it. Because it's not only you who suffer that. This thing happened before. It happens to Christians to check them if truly they are winning. Are you winning or are you losing? What are you facing? See, if you can see that persecution when it comes, rejection when it comes, it's a spiritual warfare. What you can do, guard your soul. Stand your ground. Very soon, you'll be rejoicing. You'll be the one who will give testimony. One of our problems we are facing today is we forget our souls and we begin to search around us. Search solution around us. When problems strike, deal with your soul. I want to hold my Christianity. I can see I don't have money. But I have Jesus. I don't have friends. But I've got Jesus. If you can do that, that persecution will bring joy in you. I don't know if you're hearing me. Thank God you've been rejected. Thank God hatred is around Thank God suffering is around you. But tell yourself, there's something that I cannot lose. I can rather lose all. But not what is in me. Because what is in me, I'm entrusted with it. I cannot lose what God gave me because of something around me. If you remember Iseo, by just mere hunger, 
he forgot about the birthright of his soul. In fact, he forgot his Christianity. Christianity he just forgot. We have got challenges today. Ask your neighbor, my friend. Are you facing a spiritual warfare? Overcome first. Let your soul be a winner. If you complain, you are trapped. If you speak against other people, you are trapped. Even what you are praying for, you won't overcome. Many people want to change people around them. Deal with yourself. Deal with yourself. Deal with yourself. You can't change the situation around you. If you are failing to control your flesh, you can't change. You start to rule your flesh by your soul. When your soul is attracting the word by faith, that soul must be powerful over the flesh. But if now the last of the flesh is more powerful than your soul, there are some Christians who are overcoming today. Say I'm overcoming today. Say I'm overcoming today. You know, last time I told you that many gossipers uh, are intercessors. But I want to tell you about other intercessors. Are the people who had less privilege in life. Less privileged people are hands of the Almighty. If they see that ability in them. Ah, God can use them. The moment you see there is poverty, you pray. If you pray, you guard your soul. Because, can I tell you this? I want to tell you something that maybe you can just check in your life. The reason why you cannot pray for love. It's not that you can't do that. It's because there is sin in you. You cannot waste time talking alone when you know there is something wrong you are doing. You know, you, you deal with yourself. You allow the blood of Jesus to wash that sin away. Now when you pray, you mean business. There are two things you can do. If sin is in you, either you do it for people or when you are alone, either you lie and say you are doing it. There are some people who are listening to me today. I see you overcoming your enemy. Your soul will be saved. Look at verse uh, 13. He says, but in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, keep on rejoicing. Can you see that? So that when his glory is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy. I have read that verse. I found this verse is important. I don't know if you're hearing that. It's like Matthew 5, 5 11 and 12. 11, 12. Under persecution, you are blessed. You are rejoicing because you know the end. You know what will come. If you know what will come, you just know that God will answer you. I'm facing pain here. There's healing there. Poverty here, but there's riches there. So whatever that is coming, what will trap me here so that I must not go there? I see you going there. I see you going there. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you look at this verse? In 2 Corinthians 10, 13 to 5. It says, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. Though we walk in flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Why? Because our weapons are not carnal. I'm sure this verse is telling us that 
when people are speaking bad about you by fighting you, they want to sin against God. Our weapon is not carnal. Our weapon. Sometimes you must listen to what your enemies say. Your enemy always speak opposite of what God wants to do. When your enemy say you won't succeed, it means your enemy is aware you are successful. Your enemy is not carnal. I don't know if you are hearing that. If you listen to your enemy, the more you have more enemies that they are if you try to close your ear, you will hear God speaking. Because, you know, if you know that whatever that is happening around you is to make you not to be connected with the one who gave you a sermon, with the one who said you must live. Therefore, you won't listen around. You will disconnect yourself and understand, oh, I cannot use my hands to fight. When people curse you, fight you, guard your soul. If you do that, you are winning. If people fight you, curse you, guard your soul. If you do that, the battle is over. Remember the Bible says, our warfare is not carnal. If it's spiritual, it means if I guard my soul in truth, in righteousness, I speak the word, meditate the word, whatever. I can tell you, the same people who are fighting you, God will begin to fight them. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you want to overcome easy, I've seen that it's easy. We draw and allow God to do. That's why I say, cast all your cares so upon you and I will care for you. I don't know if you're hearing that. I see God fighting the for the you. Battle to the battle belongs to God. Listen, don't fight for yourself. Tell them, don't fight for yourself. It's only losers. They fight for themselves. If you read Galatians 5 verse 17, it says, flesh and the spirit are contrary to each other. So that you cannot do what you wish. To show that there's a fight. They are contrary. Your, your flesh needs this. Your spirit needs this. I, I believe that by this scripture, we can learn that we can learn that, we can learn that what the flesh desires might be the one that wants to trap our soul. One time I was telling people here, I said, many of our conferences, the conference many of our revivals, the revivals the crusade, the are no longer what God has spoken. It's flesh. Flesh is demanding. There's no money. Let me go for crusade. Many, many things that is happening is flesh. flesh now. Now. I mean, if your flesh overpowers you, you don't do what you wish. I don't know if you're hearing me. One of our problems is we are in the flesh than in the spirit. We are saved. Whatever we are doing, we are, we are doing it for our body. We are doing it for offering tithe. It's for our body. But if we do it because it's a program from above, whether there is no offering or tithe, we will carry on. I don't know if you're hearing me. Ask your neighbor, say, my friend. Is what you do that pleases God? Is what you do that pleases God?
than what pleases you. That it will bring a reward. It's what you do that pleases God than what pleases you. That it will bring a reward. If you want to go somewhere, check whom you are pleasing. If you are pleasing God, you are overcoming in your spiritual warfare. We need Christians who can overcome. I feel victory in my life. I feel success in my spirit. In the name of Jesus. We are, we are in the last days. We must check ourselves and recheck. If not, Satan will trap us Satan and abuse us. There is something that I hate much. It's something that you know you have been doing this for years. But the, the one who judges come and say you have Mara never done anything. This is when you are celebrated all over the world. But before God you are doing nothing. This, this is a very something that I was been checking for many you can be celebrated, known all over the world. But try to find your own thing. But if your soul is defeated, your outward can still be celebrated. But what will happen to you? When I talk about Christianity, I'm not talking about my house, my, my wife, my children. I'm talking about what you can see. It's better now you deal with what people cannot see. When they beat you at the bag, you say, sorry, 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 sorry. Mm -mm. I'm dealing with myself with fear. My salvation is important. Otherwise, who has lived 200 years? Can you ask me? Who has lived 200 years? So all of us very soon will be gone. So let's fight our soul. Spiritual warfare is for your soul. When you stand now, after you have overcome, anything that you need, when you pray, it will come. Start with your soul. When you go to materials, you will know what you need. Not all blessings are blessings. Not all money belongs to you. Not all cars belong to you. If you overcome here in your spirit, when you go out to the things of the flesh, you won't worry why you don't have this. You will be knowing why you don't have this. And you will know why God gave you this. Or what is coming to you, you will know. I'm praying that today your spirit is open to see your future. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I open your spirit to see the future. I pray for you so that your spirit sees the future. Receive a blessing. Receive it a blessing. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Spiritual warfare. After you have defeated, you stand. If you stand, now you take. You take what belongs to you. Can you take when you are asleep? Can you take when you are asleep? You are taking when you are standing. Do you know why you are not receiving all those materials? Because when Satan throws an arrow, it takes you off guard. You fall down. Now you are supposed to declare things to happen. You are busy with an injury. You are busy with it. So you oh, oh, what about the oh? You can't declare things now because can, can I tell you this? Before a miracle comes, Satan attacks. So overcome that Attack, you'll be a winner. Tell the best of my friend. Overcome what you are facing. You'll be a winner. Can I give you only one scripture? Let me give you one scripture. Yeah. 
Second Timothy three twelve. Timothy wa three twelve. That scripture. I want to give you. You reason it, and it will help you. It says, all that will live godly in Christ will suffer what? Persecution. Amen. That scripture, that scripture is a, all that live godly in Christ. It is saying, those who live godly will suffer persecution. I say, suffer persecution in Christ. The persecution will be coming because you are in Christ. Some of you have lost trust. Some of you already because even Christians sit on top of your head. But Lord, you to suffer persecution. I don't know if you're hearing me. They make Christian. I'm not talking about uh, people of the family. I'm talking about Christians in church. Think about, you know, uh, a Christian try to fight you so that you lose whatever. Oh, you surprised. You're surprised that a Christian is supposed to encourage you is oh, the one who's kicking you out. One day when you go to church, you find that oh, Christians you are supporting is the one who's sitting on top of you. Can I tell you this? To show that you're a candidate of heaven. Is when you suffer persecution and you are sustained in that persecution until you overcome. You are a candidate of heaven. You suffer persecution. But God sustained you. You don't sin in that persecution. Remember, persecution is there to question you. Are you sure you mean business when you say a Christian? It's a spiritual warfare. You must be sustained. If you know this, you won't complain. Tell them to change your mind. Can you change your mind? You can lose all. You can be rejected, facing everything. But if you are saying, I want to hold my Christian life, I can tell you, you are the one that will be celebrated. But usually when we serve persecution, listen to this, in persecution, if someone you don't know is persecuting you, you know, that persecution is not persecution. But a person you know must be the one who brings persecution on you. Then you know you're a Christian now. So don't look at that person. Look at yourself. Think about when you just found that it's your mother's wishing you. Think about when you just find people you know that this one you trusted is the one who's killing you. Do you know that devil will never use people from far? Those people you love most are the ones that will bring a great temptation. And when you see that temptation, persecution, challenges, just know that there is something in you. And that thing must come out to be seen by people. I see people who are facing that. I want to tell you. I want to declare you. There is an assignment of God in you. How I many of you are suffering persecution? If you are suffering it, rejoice. rejoice. Just rejoice. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Sometimes, Persecution works well for you. So that you disconnect with wrong people to I'll tell you that persecution sometimes is very good for you. 
it works to disconnect you from wrong people to right people. Two, it sharpens your hearing. And you can hear God better. And your, your Christianity becomes better. Sometimes pain teaches you to trust God. Losing teaches you to believe more on Whatever that happens to you, it teaches you you start to have faith. Sometimes it sharpens your understanding. You reason better. Divorce makes your mind to, and makes you to get the better. I don't know if you're hearing that. But let me read the last scripture. Philippians 1:27 Philippians 1:27 to 30 to 30 That scripture take it home Arichele one le rile shai Philippians 1 Ma Philippians 1 27 27 to 30 How many of you are hearing me Are you hearing that Yaba kai ma bantwang le antwa Can you read that in your Bible Aloud. It says, uh, verse 27. 27. Then Jesus answered. Lisina moleka uchura bahanyechi bao rohanyecha rabona ili ubutlati jawore ba la sera ulina ya babu sati ja puluso rei ja umudim Rubani Kabaka la Kreste Litoba Lish Shediche Kahaurelo Si Yarumudumela Fela I want to show you two ways from 28. You just say, and in no way be alarmed or intimidated by your openness. For such and for such and fearlessness on your part is a clear sign proof and a seal for them of their impending destruction, but a clear sign for you of deliverance and salvation. Where we have read, we read sign, sign, sign. You know, as a child of God, you must understand signs. A sign of yourself hearing things and you're not intimidated. It's a sign to the opponents that very soon they will be defeated. Listen to this. This shows that your opponents are looking at you closely. If you are searching for a job, they know you are searching for a job. They are looking at you closely. So give them a sign that when you're not getting a job, you're not even worrying about it. I don't know if you're hearing me. A sign of proving that you're a winner against those who want to destroy your life is when you're not intimidated by anything. And it's a sign to them that they are going to fall. If you want to know that you are a winner, from now on, don't be intimidated by anything. I have never been intimidated. I don't feel intimidated. I know the one who called me. I've been preaching the gospel here for years now. I know that my goal is not what people see, but yeah, it is what to... God will bring. When you're not intimidated, very soon, 
your enemies will be exposed. Listen, intimidation affects your stand in the Lord. I don't know if you're hearing me. It affects your faith. It really affects what, what God wants to do with you. I can give you an example when God was speaking with Moses. When Moses hear that the Israelites are afraid that ah. Egyptians are coming, it troubled his spirit. He was intimidated. And said, God, these people now, they are crying. And now, why you brought them here? He began to speak what they are speaking. Because intimidation makes you to speak a language of your enemy. You have to be contrary to your enemy. By the way, when your enemy say, you are going nowhere, you tell your enemy, you don't know me. You will say, I don't know if you are hearing me. Amen. So, Moses said, when he was still contemplating what he could do, God spoke. God rescued him so that there will be a miracle. They say miracle when you're not intimidated. I don't know if you're hearing me. Your confidence takes you forward to find the grace and mercy of God. There are some Christians who are here. If you are not intimidated by what you are facing, you won't even pray about it. You will speak faith about it. And you will overcome. Are you intimidated by what you are facing? Why do you go for fasting? It shows you are intimidated. Some fastings are shows that you are intimidated. If you are a Christian, when you face a challenge, just speak the words. Go for fasting of loving God. Just go for fasting and say, my fasting is of loving God. Therefore, you will guide your soul. From there, God will reveal to you why you are facing. Not when you are intimidated. Tell my friend, what is it that is intimidating? You know, I have seen, I have been asking Christians this, which I want to tell you. I have seen people who are intimidating others so that they take what they have. I have seen that the moment you are intimidated, you, you lose everything. everything. Many things, like when you are in the church, many of you, you didn't give because you love God, you gave because you were intimidated. Can you see how you have lost everything you, you, you were intimidated. You, 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 you end up giving. I don't know if you're hearing me. I'm just giving this example. Which will help you. I went to Tando a long time ago. I had one prophet from Nigeria. Who was I took him to Tando. And I was like, 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 I realize the way he's doing things. It affect my soul. And say, hey, no, I don't want to encourage this. I call him. I say, let's see that we talk. I said, let's cancel this crusade. It was the second day. We were coming to the third. I said, let's cancel he this. Asked he asked me. I said, the message you preach. On Monday there, you preach it here. And the message you preach on Tuesday, you preach it here. So I know the message you are going to preach tomorrow. Let's cancel. He look at me and I don't understand. I said, no. Tomorrow, you are going to preach about this. And then you will make people to fall down. And from there, you take their money. On Thursday, you'll be doing this. I say, sorry, I don't want to be part of this. Let's stop this. 
from there, this man was questioning me. I didn't know that already. He could spot the rich people and ask their numbers on the other side. And from there he called them. After I canceled the crusade, I'm just seeing a person, people coming with an oil, fish oil, and a towel. All of them, they are coming. They are coming there like this. They pack her when they come up from the car. Fish oil, oil, and and oil. oil. I said, what's going on here? They say, no, no, prophet called me. I said, oh, prophet, you know you your number. Said, no, he me the number. Oh. <laughs> All right, listen to this. I'm going now. Okay. Yeah. You will be left with your prophet. Said, oh, yes, sir. 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 Yes, this man was a well-known in Limpopo. And he said to me, I know you, you are a man of God. But are you sure if I go with this oil and this towel, I will get the healing of my HIV. And then Another thing, the prophet said I must bring 30,000. I said, my brother, I don't think you'll be healed. I don't think so. The way you are asking me, already you are doubting. So if you are doubting, if you believe in, please, don't include me. Just go straight with your child. Why you came with your child? He Why told me, so told for you to buy, you are supposed to ask me first if you are supposed to buy the towel and and fish oil. That man was like, say, he looked at me, he looked there, he looked at me. Later, because it's HIV positive. He went forward with the child. Some months I heard that he died. And I realized that, oh, everybody was intimidated. It was the prophet who would just say, I know your account number. Wow, 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 wow. Bring, Bring how much? And from there, this person knows my account number. Give the person knows my account number. Oh, the person can check everything. So I go jail, I go fail. If the person knows your wife, if I'm a child, I'm sad. He can even check your wife. I go jail, I'm sad. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. So today. You are the one who's going to chase your enemy. Your enemies will be intimidated if you believe. Say amen. Can you remove fear? Whatever that intimidates you is claiming you to be a loser. Can you remove that thing? When you leave this service, don't care what people are saying about you. Don't care. Deal with your soul. Deal with yourself. I don't know if you are hearing me. Nobody must intimidate you. Nobody must put fear on you. You are one one. No, no, no. People are living to talk about themselves. And they are talking about other people. Can I say this from today here? As I'm standing here, I see you chasing your enemies. I see you chasing your enemies. The moment they look at you, even the spirit, they will say they will be intimidated. They will run away from you. I say you're a winner. You're a winner. I say you're a winner. Look here. Think about. Generational curse that has been brought by spirits nah, 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 who are fighting the family. Before they attack you, they must be intimidated. If they are intimidated, if you, you sleep, you dream them. The moment you dream them, don't be afraid. Know that the reason why you saw them is because they are intimidated. So what are you going to do? When you wake up, 
you declare a word and say from today you have arrested my family my brothers and generation but you will never do anything to me and I'm chasing you up in the name of Jesus can you tell your neighbor say my friend what is it that is intimidating 